This is it, you tiny little munchkins. Your lives are about to change. We're finally on chapter three, and we're hitting up some derivative rules. Specifically, the rules for uh, power functions and adding two functions and constants. Now, you may not understand what this means. You may think this is just another day in your lives and nothing that's worth celebrating, but I'm gonna tell you a fact, and that fact is that this chapter, 3.1 in particular, warrants a hell yes. And here's the reason why, people you know that f of x and its derivative f prime of x are functions. And so we've been kind of, sort of, talking about f prime as a function. We've had these questions where you would sketch the graph of the derivative um, or you would estimate the value of the derivative at a point. But chapter 3 is the first time where we actually will take an equation like f of x equals blah and stuff Given an equation, we can actually write the derivative as some other equation-y thing. And that's going to be magic, people. We are finally, finally going to get a real equation for the derivative and not really have to, like, sketch graphs or hedge our bets anymore. You're still going to have to do that Chapter 2 stuff on the midterm. There are going to be questions where there's no other way to do it. But from here on out, most of the stuff we do will actually just be straight-up formulas, and that's a lot nicer. All right, check it out. Let's get to these rules. Now, before we do, you're going to see some notation that looks like this, d over dx. And this may remind you of Leibniz notation, that thing that we would have stuff like dy over dx or df over dx. And these guys were notations for the derivative function once you had already taken the derivative. But when you see the d over dx just by itself, that basically means the thing that comes after this is something you're supposed to take the derivative of. So, with that in mind, here's our very first rule. And it looks like meh, but let me tell you about this meh. So first, this d over dx just means take the derivative of the thing that follows. And the thing that follows looks like x to some number power. So let's make sure we understand that like x is a variable, but r is going to be some number, some fixed number. And if you're supposed to take the derivative of x raised to some fixed number power, then you just bring that power down so r on top becomes r in front, and then you subtract 1 in the exponent. So dudes, let's do simple examples. What if you have something like the derivative of x to the 7? Well, you just bring down the 7, and then x gets raised to the power of 7 minus 1. So 7x to the 6. You see, this is freaking easy. All right, um, how about some other examples? We could have the derivative of uh, x to the 3.79 and then you just bring the first number down, and then you subtract one. Really easy. A um, Couple others just to make sure we're golden. You could have the derivative of x to a negative number. And actually, let me write it like this, dudes. What if we have something like derivative over of one over x to the 10? Well, before you can even take the derivative, what you wanna do is rewrite it as a power function. So this, without even taking the derivative, I'm just using algebra to rewrite one over x to the 10 as x to the minus 10. And now that I'm rewritten it like that, then I can use the rule and it's easy. Minus 10 comes out front, x to the power of, and now I subtract one, and so minus 10 minus one is negative 11. Um, all right, so that's cool, I guess. Uh, let me do one more that's a little bit weird. What if you've got something like the derivative of one over the cube root of x? Well, the first thing that I would do is I would change one over cube root of x to one over x to the power of one third. So we're getting there, dudes, but still you have to rewrite it like a power function. And so this is the derivative of, let's bring the x to the one third up top, but now we have to make it negative. So just by algebra, we took that one over cube root of x, turned it to x to the minus one third, and now the derivative rule applies. So it's one third x to the, and then negative one third minus one is negative four thirds. So that's your answer for that puppy. All right, and then dudes, two more quick ones that are important is this. Um, you might see something like the derivative of a constant number, the derivative of seven, for example. Well, whenever you see that, um, first, let me tell you the answer, and then I'll give you a quick explanation. Whenever you see just the derivative of a number all by itself, no x is attached to it, the answer is just 0. And this is because 7 is the same thing as 7 times x to the 0 power. 
right? You may remember that anything to the zero power is equal to one. So if we wanted to, we could write it like this. And then you can imagine that zero in the exponent coming down and, and making everything zero. So maybe that's like a, an intuitive explanation of why the derivative of a number is zero. Dudes, you can also see this because, let me move over to the side here. Remember that when you take the derivative of a function, you're looking at slope. So the function y equals seven looks like this flat line. And because it's flat, in particular, this is a line with slope zero. And that's another reason why the derivative of this guy is zero. But the main thing to remember here is that if you're taking the derivative of a constant, then it's always going to be zero. And the other thing to remember is that sometimes people get confused by this, but it's still the exact same rule we've been talking about. If you see the derivative of x all by itself, well, that's the same thing as the derivative of x to the one power. And bring the one down, that's one x to the zero. And anything to the zero is always one, so it's just one. Basically, the derivative of an x by itself is just 1. And again, you can think of this as slope, because x is a line with slope 1. So hopefully that makes sense. Dudes, that rule that we just talked about was maybe even the hardest one of these three, even though it wasn't very hard. Check out this addition rule. The addition rule basically just says if you're trying to take the derivative of two functions added together, then just take the derivative of each piece, and it's no big deal. In fact, guys, this may seem so obvious that we shouldn't even talk about it, but it turns out that this is not true for multiplying. So just a quick note, if you're taking the derivative of f of x times g of x, this is not equal to f prime times g prime. It turns out that for multiplication, you need a more complicated rule. We're not going to cover that now. We'll do that in a different section. But that's just kind of to tell you why we bother saying crap like, well, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. <laughs> it's because um, there are some cases where simple things like that are simply not true. All right, so some simple examples. Um, you know, this is pretty straightforward. What if you're taking the derivative of x squared plus x to the minus 6? Well, you just do the derivative of each piece. So x squared becomes 2x to the 1. And x to the minus 6 becomes negative 6x to the negative 7. Take the derivative of each piece, add them together, no big deal. Um, maybe one more thing. The derivative of square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. First, let's make this the derivative of x to the 1 half plus x to the negative 1 half. And then let's just use our rules. So 1 half. Uh, becomes 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And then x to the negative 1 half becomes negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves. Bam, puppies, no big deal. You just take the derivative of each piece and add them together. And guys, this constant rule, it might even be the easiest thing of all. Check it out. All it says is that if you see a function with a constant multiplied, all you got to do is basically go ahead and take the derivative of the function -y part Ignore the constant completely, but then just multiply it back in when you're done. So as always, looking at the formula is not the easiest way to think about it. Let's do some quick examples. Let's say I've got the derivative of 10 times x cubed. What the formula says to do is first just take the derivative of x cubed. So x cubed becomes 3x squared. And here we just completely ignored the 10. But now that we're done with the derivative, we have to multiply the 10 back in. And that's it, people. Uh, maybe another example, the derivative of um, 100 um, times the fourth root of x. As always, you want to rewrite this crap like a power function. So this is the derivative of 100 times x to the 1 fourth. Now we can actually use the rule. We ignore the 100 completely. x to the 1 fourth becomes 1 fourth x. Now you subtract 1 and 1 fourth minus 1 is the same thing as uh, negative 3 fourths. But now don't forget to put the 100 back in. And we might as well go ahead and simplify this sucker. 100 times a fourth is just 25. All right, dudes, that's it. These rules are simple. Know them, love them. It's going to be great.